This is a video response to uh, your video, Piro, about the hard problem. Um, just a, a brief introduction. I uh, found your channel via Gary and uh, Gary's via Fred's and actually Gary's via some other atheists on YouTube. And I just wanted to help add some things, hopefully. Um, I probably watched about two or three hundred of your videos and about, I don't know, three hundred to four hundred of Gary's. And uh, only one or two of uh, Hitler days and uh, Job's. So I don't really know a lot about them or uh, their side of the argument or the discussion. But um, I do want to respond to a couple things. Um, and just to go down the list. Um, you said that you'd like to see it expressed by physics. Uh, keeping in mind uh, what what physics really is, you know, the, the gist of it, um, you know, working with uh, time, space, uh, energy, matter, and various combinations of them in the form of work, which energy and work can be related, or almost directly related in the form of jewels, and uh, force, and uh, just pressure, and um, the main thing is uh, energy and time, and then how that relates to uh, biology, and uh, how we work in this universe, how we work as the universe, um, and uh, a major thing that I think that, uh, I don't know if you're neglecting it or if you're including it every time you say science, but uh, evolutionary biology and, uh, you know, the, the beginning of life with uh, biopoiesis and Autopoiesis and allopoiesis. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with those terms, but essentially, biopoiesis, the origin of life, uh, autopoiesis, the reproduction of a system by itself, um, in this case, life. Life is an uh, autopoietic system, as well as uh, allopoiesis, where you create other things in addition to that, where life creates, like say, tools. Um, how this all relates to consciousness, it's, it's a matter of time. And uh, I know you mentioned the, the DNA molecule several times, and uh, Really, I guess a, a good way would just be to go through some of your uh, questions and points that uh, caught my attention throughout your last video. Um, you made the statement uh, why the hard problem is distinct and needs to be resolved. Um, I'm not a big fan of the hard problem. Uh, I don't think it's that hard. I really do think it's... Uh, it doesn't need to be resolved. I think it needs to be dissolved, um, softened up, and I think that is is happening over time. The more we know, the less difficult this is to understand. Um, but of course, we have to relearn it every time, uh, individually. And we do, but thanks to recorded history, um, it's becoming easier and easier to pick up where other people have left off. And, uh, you know, education, 
is another thing. Parenting, just teaching, learning. All those things are, are beneficial to us. Um, one of your other questions. Are we filling in the blanks or do we need a new framework? Um, kind of filling in the blanks. I look at it kind of like a, a porous rock and uh, logic, reasoning, science is kind of like an acid dissolving at it and it's creating its own holes and again it's softening it up and uh, it's becoming easier, more malleable, easier to work with, easier to understand, easier to deal with. Um, I know that scares a lot of people because a lot of their um, ideas or ideologies um, are based in previous positions that people have held and those positions have been shared with them and they have learned them and they enjoy them. Um, you know, like superstition. Um, and just being able to tackle superstition with, uh, you know, to, excuse me, my uh, vocabulary in this subject is not very extensive, but their ability to, they, they kind of start with their reason for being in a, um, in a sort of superstitious mindset, and then they try to add certain things to it, be it uh, from mainstream science, from um, proto-science or new science, um, or, or theoretical science, or, um, or from fringe science, things that uh, are not publicly accepted or may even be a, a private belief. But they, they try to add to that to support um, their present state and I think that uh, I think all of us are somewhat rooted in, in that but also a lot of us are rooted in, in science uh, luckily and in what did you mention uh, sort of a slipstick uh, epistemology or, or as I just like to view it as a skeptical position. Sort of where we're, I mean, that's much simpler, but where we doubt things, we question things, and that's, that's really the most important thing is what kind of, at least in my opinion, what kind of questions we ask of each other. So I kind of, uh, kind of weeded through your video and pretty much pulled out a lot of the questions that you ask. And I figured that would be a good place to start a, a uh, dialogue. So, so, yeah, a lot of people are held in the... They try to base everything on their superstitious beliefs or to support that. Or, um, or they like to think that this is somehow fantastic. <laughs> and just... Um, and that it's very mysterious and they enjoy the mysterious which which is a good thing I mean for even a mainstream scientist to look at the world as a, a mysterious thing but I think the more we learn the more you know recorded history we acquire um, the more more people start from a skeptical position and work from there based on solid evidence, uh, solid understandings, or, uh, you know, practical applications, practical understandings, the better that we'll do uh, at understanding what this is, and, you know, hopefully we can, we can make this better, um, make life better. Uh, or make better life if it comes down to it if we make something 
that works better than, than we do and that we have we have evolved to over the last four billion years um, why not I, I don't know if we're really that good a lot of this a lot of this I, I don't like um, and, and Gary brings up a lot of this stuff you know like the whole aspect of uh, cannibalism how life feeds on life and how is that productive for life uh, and it's it's really not but it's a uh, it's chemistry you know like you said towards the end of your video um, that's what this is we are attempting to acquire the chemistry that we need to continue to exist from other life forms um, be it proteins carbohydrates lipids or anything to create neurotransmitters hormones any of that to just a function um, and to, to seemingly better ourselves but really we're kind of perpetuating uh, self-destruction in a way but some life isn't some life like it at the beginning um, when it was all pretty much biopoiesis when that was the uh, sole driving factor in evolutionary biology hadn't even really um, come into play yet um, the, the stuff that was here um, three and a half to four billion years ago um, it was a great great a large amount of chemicals that were available to to anything that might happen to come out of it or come upon it and and uh, I kind of disagree with and I wish I could disagree but with how we uh, we went about creating cellular structures to defend ourselves from each other and eventually sort of uh, weapons in a sense to take from each other uh, what we needed to better ourselves um, but here we are and uh, I'd like to think that we can someday break free of that completely um, but that's a, that's a whole nother another subject um, I guess the big question is is where did consciousness arise or, or when did it ar arise um, and I think a lot of things have it to a certain extent and when I say a lot I mean a lot mostly mammals um, very small amounts of it I, I see it more as uh, reactions um, reactions uh, responses to stimulation um, and the acquisition of goods that uh, that has over time almost made it necessary to form communication um, you see birds doing it um, just about all animals communicate um, more like hunting you know when it comes to mammals um, dolphins how they work in pods to um, round up fish um, or even like a cheetah who uh, stalks through the grass um, or even a, a pack of lions working together um, communication is is somewhat necessary and that, that brings up a good point like the uh, or excuse me that I'm thinking of the cheetah it kind of works alone versus the uh, the lions that kind of uh, keep the sort of keep in contact with each other and they rely on each other and their actions to determine what to do and the actions of of the other group the herd the you know whatever it is that they're hunting um, 
but yeah, communication is one thing. But then you've got some of the uh, lone animals that uh, do their hunting alone. And it almost kind of makes me wonder if they kind of imagine themselves, you know, or they imagine themselves in, the, say, a gazelle's position. And uh, they think, you know, does the gazelle see me? Am, am I doing the thing that the gazelle won't notice? Or would the gazelle notice if I did that? And if so, I won't do that because I need to get as close as possible to it. Um, so I'm kind of getting off on a bit of a tangent here, but the emphasis is uh, evolutionary biology. I, you didn't mention that once throughout the video, although you did mention science. Um, and I think if you want to understand how uh, consciousness or the sense of self, you know, which... I don't know if they're really two separate things, or uh, two sides of the same thing, or just two two terms used to describe different aspects of the same thing. Um, one of your questions, uh, at, at what point does it come on this Cartesian theater like we have it? Um, I assume you mean consciousness, uh, where we feel like we're an observer. Again, I think that's a, you know, the cheetah is a good example of that. I imagine mice even have it to some extent. Um, do they simply just react to, say, a human? Or, you know, to a sound? To a feeling, a vibration, a sight? Um, or do they think, you know, to some extent, um, this... I have to be ready for this. A uh, a person might be looking. An animal might be looking. A uh, you know a predator might be looking for me. Yeah, I don't I don't believe that we know that fully at this point. But I think that uh, we will find that to a certain degree, humans have certainly mastered that. Um, and I think that's especially because of hunting. Um, but also because of mating is another very important thing. We need to imagine what it, what a girl wants in order to find us attractive. And uh, we do a pretty good job of generalizing that. Um, but there's, you know, there's so many factors to take into account. But... But some factors are more dominant than others. They're more important. Um, and later you, you mentioned algorithms, which, which I can get, get to now. Uh, a statement that you made, uh, where in that process, where in that processing, is there a mechanism for something to be going, oh, I'm watching this stuff. I'm thinking about it. I can see why such a thing would be useful to help the thinking machine to process this information, but I don't see how it would arise. And so, unlike the easy problem where we can say, look, we got these three algorithms, just keep perfecting them, we'll create something that acts like it has a self. Uh, we don't have the framework in experiencing being a self. We don't um, something a framework. We don't have a framework that we can fill in for that. Uh, and then you go on to say we need uh, something else, or we need uh, the framework. Um, the framework really is evolutionary biology and just the process of evolution, the, um, the trial and error, um, which is something if you, if you really wanted to create, and here is one of the big points that I wanted to make, um, if you want to imagine a way to create a, say a machine or a, even a computer program that thinks the way that humans do, or, or becomes conscious, um, one of the major things to, that you would have to factor in there are the things that we 
experience throughout our life um, from from the beginning um, you know like if you think back to your childhood as far back as you can you know you were alive before year you know for years before your earliest thought but during that time um, you were acquiring information which which we all were and eventually we we create these thoughts that stay with us up until this point and, and if we continue to revisit them and think about them more um, can stay with us throughout our entire lives uh, and that that process of creating um, the the neural pathways and reinforcing them um, ionizing them so to speak I, and I'm pretty sure that is the way that it goes you essentially send a, a charge down that way and it strengthens the entire pathway almost like a widening a road or adding street lights to it to make it easier for traffic to travel along it um, and each of those there's just so many of them uh, and it's a it's a very complicated network but now that we have uh, the internet and we can we have better understanding of what a network like that would would be like um, and it's not always a, of course probably isn't a single pathway that goes from point A to point B there are many um, sort of branches out and then branches in I would imagine with a certain particular pathway either being strengthened between two neurons if you imagine them scattered about um, and start at one point and it can go left or right um, but eventually it has to converge on a on a decision on a thought on a you know the end of a thought it could be like like lightning branching out and uh, our consciousness could be sort of a, a cloud or seen as sort of a cloud of uh, electrical charges that are traveling throughout the brain moving about place to place and uh, eventually it does go down to uh, and I believe the uh, saw a video on this that uh, the self when you imagine yourself it is deeply rooted in the brain um, just where the spinal column meets meets the brain and uh, every idea that you have regarding yourself tends to stimulate that area which is obviously uh, I mean it, it makes sense because it's needed when you when you decide to raise your hand um, you have to think uh, it's my hand I need to raise it you know or um, any action that you take requires uh, electricity to flow through there and through the rest of your body so there's a direct relation there but as far as the framework goes I would say if you really wanted to create a framework or if we really wanted to um, that we would have to do it I mean if what are we trying to do are we trying to recreate this are we trying to recreate some um, consciousness as we see it in ourselves <sighs> and uh, I'm afraid that there's a there's a lot of decisions like you mentioned the, the algorithms um, that we'll have to go through <laughs> and in order to do that in order to write consciousness in a computer program or even for a, a robot or a cyborg or something um, we would have to look at our own programming if this if this is what we want out of a computer program um,
there's so many things to take into account. Uh, so many algorithms all being one um, ultimate one. Like, uh, you know, the, the value of communication. And you mentioned that in the video. Uh, sharing information with people. Um, how we find it beneficial or not. Um, and that's that's a decision that we all have to make. Even, even I um, have thought about it not publicly sharing information freely because it may not be beneficial to me in the long run because if I did want to um, let's say financially gain from it um, make it, putting all this information out there or all the information that I have um, and have come to piece together in certain patterns um, putting it out there won't make it you know I need there needs to be a market for it and if I saturate the market freely with it there may not be a demand for it which is is really unfortunate that uh, we do that I'm, I'm not so interested in financial gain but I, I can see you know in this world that I've come to know that um, It's, it's unfortunate that money is required. But it, it definitely does hinder how freely we share things, share information, share new discoveries, um, the whole idea of patents and trademarks and copyright and all that. I'm disgusted by it old, maybe. Um, but, yeah, the, the framework, um, look no further than life. If that's, if this is really what you want, if this is really what we want. You ask the question, what kind of machine creates this? We do. Life. Um, I don't, I guess I don't really see how this is so difficult. You know, I, I looked at all your questions. Um, like which, which kind of wiring. Um. If you don't continuously think of yourself as a as a step in life, as a uh, as a part of the process, because life is really a process. Um, at least that's the way that I view it. Not as a, a thing, but uh, maybe a process is a thing, but. Uh, I, that's another reason why I disagree or I, I dislike the fact that we are contained um, we breathe in and out we drink water and urinate we eat food and excrete it um, so we are relying on the environment sort of to, to fuel this to keep this body alive but not We're not separate from it entirely. We feel like that's the way that we would like to go. Um, or maybe that is sort of the direction that we're heading. And I, I don't like it. I would, uh, I would rather we work together. You know, we, we, we weren't, we weren't restricted. And I know that it's, it may be difficult to see sort of a consciousness arising from a, a, a soup of life, you know, as opposed to independent organisms, which is not really independent, but uh, individual. <coughs> but 
Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not very hard. I I don't recall you mentioning biology in the video. Um, neuroscience is part of it, but I mean, it's a process. It's many steps. I mean, you think about all the computers that have been thrown away. Um, how many computers have we made and how many have been thrown away because the new ones were better at doing what we wanted than the old ones. Uh, which what we want is for them to do a thing, and that is kind of what life, I mean, the same comparison, either we want life to do a thing, we want, we want to do a thing, and life wants to do its thing. and. Uh, this thing is sort of rooted in the in the origin and the whole self-containing mechanism. Which, uh, I don't know. I'm not really happy about it, but it's kind of late to go back. But who knows? Who knows? Somewhere life might not have done this separated itself from other living things and, and perhaps perhaps it flows perhaps there's a there's consciousness that uh, flows like uh, different liquids or even I mean kind of like oil and water Uh, more more soluble than that where it can become a part of another one and they can they can work together and then uh, maybe maybe pull themselves away or maybe stay like that maybe grow like that maybe continue to go on um, maybe have uh, offspring much the same way we do or maybe parts of it want to be separate. Maybe two things come together, um, chemi you know, chemical, chemical consciousness. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I want to call it life at that point, by definition. But yeah, it would be life forms uh, that sort of uh, merge and then give off offspring, perhaps in various quantities. Perhaps before, before one, you know, at, at, a, at its present state, it, it would appear separate. Um, maybe one would give off some of itself before merging with another one. And then it could, they could give off, those two combined could give off various quantities of each other, you know, different, in different ratios. And if those things wanted to go merge with other things... I don't know. I don't know if thought could come from all that, especially uh, consciousness and self-reflection. I don't even know if it would need to. I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of that. It actually kind of scares me, I guess, when I do it. When, uh, when I think about myself. But... But I think I think it just scares me. I think it's it's almost been planted in us. Um, it it was an idea, and I think it's rooted in like religion has has kept it going, um, and even sort of uh, they planted it. They planted in in children, religious people, minds that have been. Uh, been taught that I've planted it in children and other people and it's sort of a, an attempt to keep us another attempt to keep us separate perhaps uh, and make us easier to manage um, yeah, I definitely disagree with that uh, but even the, even the first person thing I think it Maybe it started out as a very interesting 
idea. Some people liked it, some people didn't. Um, the ones that did like it, perhaps they, uh, I don't know, they're selfish and greedy and wanted more. And so they, they kept it going and made it easier to, uh, they make it easier to manage other people, you know, to get the resources that they need. And in this case, it's not so much the chemistry, um, but the work. The, uh, the force, you know the power. Power is one. Um, uh, speaking in terms of physics, um, it's definitely that's what it is. It's power over other people. Um, simply by thought. By, by planting thoughts in their minds. And then, uh, <laughs> even those thoughts. But, uh, let's see. Programmer, yeah, that's something that you, when you started talking about, uh, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this video. I don't know if I can pause this video. Um, let me just try to wrap it up. I've already gone on for 36 minutes. Um, you talked a lot about third and first person, and uh, I think ultimately what you should be talking about is second person, because if you're gonna tell something, you know, you want something to be alive uh, to be conscious um, that's what you're gonna have to do yeah a programmer is a second person um, this first person thing is not um, uh, it's not that important uh, of course you know if you disagree with that that may be because you view it as such, and you have a right to disagree with that, but uh, I think it's much better that we work together and see ourselves as a whole than uh, see ourselves as separate and want to see separate things, um, more manageable things, independent things. And I just think the, the first person thing is just way overrated. Um, but yeah, and and the second person does not get it's it's used far more often than than we like to notice. Um, we are pretty much told what to do, and yeah, we don't we don't like it. Some of us, I guess that's the, the very definition of free, is being being able to do what you want and not being told, you know, if you no one to tell you what to do. Uh, I don't think that we will ever be free. I certainly don't think that we have free will. Um, we're limited. And what we do. Based on uh, what we find socially acceptable or not. Or um, biologically acceptable. The risks that we take. Uh, we have to keep ourselves alive as long as we can. That's just what life does. Um, we, we take resources from other things, you know, or other people do it for us and then we buy them at the supermarket. But we, we take lives. We have to in order to keep ourselves alive. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of humans even take human lives um, just to, uh, just for uh, resources and, uh, and energy, power labor so 
um, the last things that you mentioned. Uh, the reason I doubt that we are going to do it with computers as we understand them now is because the limits of Turing machines and uh, computational models. I, didn't, I ran out of space there, but computational models and essentially what they are. And then you mentioned, uh, I think we have subtracted out pause, some of how the real world works. And that is exactly right. You, you said exactly it. And then you go on to mention chemistry. With how chemistry works, um, our computational models chemistry is not particularly computational wrong there um, well maybe chemistry itself maybe doesn't compute but um, charges build up you know it's it's a process that can there's a lot of math involved um, and it's just quantities you know when a certain quantity builds up it discharges or you know two things reach a certain proximity you know they bond it is, uh, it's math. Um, maybe, maybe I didn't get quite what you were saying there, but, um, you can make a simulation, but it really is a simulation. You have to deal with a lot of things. Um, kind of lost me there, but that was right at the end of the video. But the main thing is you're, when you pointed out that we subtracted out how the real world works, that's exactly it. That's it. You know? computers were were probably afraid that would be my guess anybody intelligent enough to program um, somewhere inside of them probably realizes that there are things that are fucked up about us um, the way that we we come into this world um, we need to steal resources from others we need to take resources from the world um, we are not what um, we are not, what's the term, um, essentially we are not, um, biopoetic. We, we don't create life out of non-life. We take our life from other life forms. Um, however, simple microorganisms are doing that. And hopefully with chemistry, we will turn the non-living, you know, there's, there's what, um, like six sextillion tons of, uh, of earth and, uh, and something like 200 billion tons of living matter, which is nothing compared to the rest of this earth. But four billion years ago, there was zero. There was zero, um, life. There was zero, um, biomass on earth it was just the chemistry that was here before the, all the connections were made and uh, and so now we're at the point where there's uh, we've gone from zero to 200 billion tons or so depending on on who's doing the math um, but let's just for the sake of argument say it's 200 billion at this point um, you know we're not we're not really helping too much right now to increase biomass um, one of the things that I do believe that we should be doing is taking more um, like converting more minerals and uh, sunlight and water and uh, creating more life more more biomass on this planet and uh, ultimately, I would like to see us do that to the entire universe, um, which is a uh, which is another reason why I'm not I'm not so opposed to the whole idea of um, all the oil that we're using. It's carbon, and uh, of the six basic elements: um, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Um, the one that is in the most limited supply is carbon. You know, we're carbon-based molecules, but there isn't much else. Like, as far as carbon goes, it's most of it's locked up in, uh, in living organisms. 
or in the biosphere right now. Um, the other stuff, there's enough of it. But I mean, if we used all those things in the ratios that we're using them now, um, the first thing that we're going to run out of is carbon. So bringing up all those uh, carbon-based molecules, those hydrocarbons, um, I don't really see it as such a bad thing. Um, you know, if you want to argue that it's going to kill some life on Earth, um, <laughs> yeah, some of the things that aren't used to it that much being up here, those hydrocarbons being up here, um, but life will adapt, and in the long run, life will benefit from it, because life will use it, it's, uh, it's essential, you know, and, uh, it's just a matter of rearranging it, you know, working on it, but it gives us something new to play with, and I really think that's why we're doing it, I don't know if other people see it as that, or if, um, you know, the people who are ultimately running, like, the petroleum industry, or the plastics or anything, really see it as such, but, uh, I think we'll be okay in that, in that respect, but, yeah, just look at life, that's it, this video's gone on long enough, um, I'd love to start doing a back and forth with you, um, this is the first time I've ever responded to a video as far as I'm uh, aware, as far as I can recall, um, in video form, and I would like to do a back and forth, but this is my first time doing this, so uh, my apologies for it being so long and so um, scattered and tangential, so uh, thanks for making all your videos.